So here we are. What husbands wish their wives understood or understand or knew about men. Yeah. Ready? I just gave you everything I know. <laughs> so let's go to Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. Here's what the wisdom writer says. Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4. Through wisdom, a house or a home is built. And by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. How many of you want those pleasant riches in your home? How many of you want that home that's filled with understanding and knowledge? And the wisdom of God. There's one way to get it. And that's to follow Him day by day, moment by moment. To go into His Word and find the truth. And that's what I hope we can do this morning. God intentionally made man, and then from the side of man, He made woe man, woman. And we discovered something over the last two weeks. That man. And that woman are what? Different. Right? That's the greatest knowledge I've got. Right? We are different, both inside and out. And the adventure of discovering your spouse's unique qualities and characteristics bring about a great deal of joy in marriage. Or they should bring about great uh, love and joy in your marriage. When I was growing up, there were some role models that were on the black and white TV. We had Ozzie Nelson. How I many of you remember Ozzie and Mary? Okay. I don't know if I want to be like Ozzie, but I sure wish I looked like Ricky and could sing like him. <laughs> we had Ozzie Nelson. And we had Jim Anderson, where father knows best. And then we had John Walton in the little house on the prairie. And despite it all up, we had Ricky Ricardo, right? And Lucy. And then somehow we morphed into Archie Bunker. <laughs> and George Jefferson. And not to exclude the younger generation, we then came along with Tool, Tim, the Tool Man Taylor. All examples of men, husbands, fathers. I want to tell you, there was some good and there was some not so good. I didn't grow up in a home with a great role model for a dad. My dad was unsaved. Dad had many issues. I love him. We had a lot of issues. I'm so thankful that there were men in the church that set a good example. That I had a godly grandfather on my mom's side. Last name was Smith. Clyde DeWitt Smith. He went by CD. Love that man. I think it's important for us to realize that there are folks all around us looking at you, looking at me. He is a role model. We're looking for role models. We're looking for the right way to go. And I just want to share a few things I hope that will help us this morning to be better in what God has called us to do. Because as far as I'm concerned, the highest calling in all the world, higher than teaching or preaching, is the call to be a parent. The call to be a husband or wife. And to know which is which. Right? It's important for husbands and wives to commit to understanding one another. And in understanding one another, we also must seek to understand the differences. That's God's command. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 3, it says this, A man should fulfill his duty as a husband 
and a woman should fulfill her duty as a wife. Each should satisfy the other's needs. That's understanding. That's the difference in coming together and making one better. First Peter 3, 7 says, You husbands likewise live with your wives in an understanding way. Through wisdom and humble spirit and understanding is established. Hmm. For the past two weeks, we've been talking about what wives wish their husbands knew about women. And Nikki and David, you missed both weeks. So I have it all written out for you. I knew it, and Brad and Abel knew it. Got it all written out for What husbands, or what wives wish their husbands knew about them? I shared with you that, that one of the most important things, and I'm coming back to you, repeat again. This is the second time you write the same word. That men and women are different. Uniquely different. God created different. I certainly didn't feel adequate sharing with you about women. And I'm not sure I feel a whole lot better sharing with you what all men think. But uh, I, I want to share some things with you because I have one advantage. I am among the male gender. Because I don't have all the answers, I'm going to use uh, some help from folks like Gary Smalling. James Dobson and John Gray and a few other notes that I picked up <coughs> along the way. But even with that, sometimes we get a little confused. I heard about two men who were out working one day. They worked for the city works department. And they were out on the side of the road where the buildings were on each side, and they were working hard. One fellow was going along and digging a hole, and the other fellow came along behind him and covered up the hole. There was a guy in the office building looking down <coughs> and watching the, down the street where these two guys were, were working so hard, working up a sweat. One guy digging a hole, the other guy filled the hole up. This guy was so amazed that, <coughs> sorry, at, at what he saw that it, it didn't make sense. It was confusing. And so he decided the only way to know what's going on is to go and ask. And so he went down to the first hole digger and he said, now listen, I, I'm really impressed with the effort you two are putting in your work, but I don't get it. Why do you dig a hole, and then why does your partner come along and fill up the hole again? <laughs> the hole here wiped his brow. He sighed with a big smile and said, well, <clears throat> I suppose it does look a little bit odd, doesn't it? Because normally we're a three-man crew. I'm the guy that digs the hole. He's the guy that buries the hole, but the guy in between that plants the tree calls him sick to death. Some of you will get that later. <laughs> she and he, without him, are like the two working without the third partner. For he is the one that plants the seed and gives us the direction. Public speaker and author, Dr. Raymond Force, believes that wives are sometimes their own arch enemies. Now, I'll we'll read you some things I don't necessarily agree with, but they're out there. Uh, he says that their own worst enemies. Uh, in his book, Angry Without a Cause, Dr. Force writes, the woman that ridicules her husband by making sarcastic remarks and subtle references to his lack of leadership and abilities is not only hurting her husband, but also herself. She's not only ensuring <clears throat> that he will have a tough time rising above her low view of him, but she will also end up despising him for not being half the man that she has discouraged him to be. Hmm. Dr. Force agrees that men are in need of reform. 
when it comes to marital issues. And I'm going to take, I think there are a lot of us that are in need of reform when it comes to marital issues. We may be influenced by Ozzy and Harriet, or Mr. and Mrs. Anderson, I don't remember her first name, or the Waltons or whatever, but I want to tell you we're not a TV show. This is real life, where the rubber meets the road. And it's hard work. It's hard work being married. But aren't the reward, rewards worthwhile? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> Dr. Force believes that the real issue is keeping women, men and women, from having a positive on one another. These things are often um, from within us. We are our own worst enemy, he says. Most books, he writes, that I have read on marriage and relationships portray man or men as relational clowns. Somebody said, what song should we sing this morning? And I thought later on, maybe it should have been Send in the Clowns, because that's the way too many men are depicted. Or too many women are depicted in, in marriage. <clears throat> Dr. Force thinks that we need to stop and look at one another and look at our marriages. Not once in a while, but often, to see who we are and where we're going. When asked if men are, <coughs> and I'm coughing until I start coughing, maybe I just stop coughing. Uh, when asked if, 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 if men are emotional creatures, Dr. Ford says, of course. They just don't typically wear on their sleeves as much as women. Men are very emotional creatures. They yearn for respect. When they don't feel that from the woman in their lives, they tend to retract into their caves. Sadly to say, many men hang out in the, at the gym or the office because they feel more respected there than they do in their own homes. The following is something that was actually said over in England some years ago. True. It's just a snippet. It's between Lady Astor, the first woman to sit as a member of Parliament at Winston Churchill. Here's the dialogue. A couple sentences. Lady Astor said, Winston, if you, if I were your wife, I'd put poison in your coffee. And Winston Churchill said, Nancy, if I were your husband, I'd drink. <laughs> There's a clash. Why? Men and women are what? Different. And so we have to try to find a happy meeting place. <clears throat> in this book, Understanding the Man in Your Life, H. Norman Wright says this. Men store more. Go ahead, punch it. They fight more. They change their minds more often than women do. Their blood is redder. Their daylight vision is superior. They have thicker skin and longer vocal cords. Their metabolic rate is higher. More of them are left-handed, like me. They feel pain less than women. They, I heard somebody laugh. <laughs> uh, I'm just reading what's written. They age earlier, but wrinkle later. Their immunity against disease is weaker. They talk about themselves less, which I don't believe, but worry about themselves more, which I do believe. Dr. Dobson says there's strong evidence that indicate that even the, the uh, seat of emotions in a man's brain is wired differently than that of a woman. So, thus far, what I said to you is that Men and women are different. But you already knew that. So what do husbands
husbands want their wives to know. First of all, I think we'd like to do away with a myth that the man's only needs are physical. Now that's a big part of it, being perfectly honest, but that's not all of it. That misconception leads to things like this. Have, have you ever heard it say, the way, the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, right? I believe that husbands would say that this philosophy expresses a very shallow opinion of men. Because deep down inside, we have some of the same types of needs as our wives. Men have emotional, relational, and spiritual needs. And I think husbands would have to say, listen, no one is just like you do. It's like they come in a little bit different package. They're male-oriented. Well, let me explain what I mean. Wives? Just like you, we have emotional needs. That's a blank for further there. That may be hard to believe. Studies show that women tend to be more emotionally open than men. I think men would agree with that. Amen? Amen. They tend to be more open because I think they're more comfortable with their emotions. But real men do have real emotional needs. It's just that it's harder for us to reach down inside and draw them out and to express them. Women tend to see feelings and behavior as the same thing. They, they tend to act on their feelings. If a woman is angry, she behaves in one way. If she's elated, it's expressed in her behavior. Usually a woman's behavior is an open window to her emotions. But most men aren't that way. We, we tend to hide our emotions. Men, men tend, tend to embrace the philosophy that real men don't wear pink. I still love 
I think part of it is because I'm going to say it later. But I love it because of the, the story. I'm also a sucker for the Lion King. I've seen the play five times. And I'll go again and get a chance. I just love those things. But we usually keep those things way down inside of us. I want you to know, ladies, your love is so important to us. In fact, your love for us is the power source from which we draw every single day. So wives, I think men would want you to know that uh, what you already know, because you have that intuition that God gives you. We want you to know that we have emotional needs. We have emotion. We just don't know how to always let them out and express them. Sometimes it's just a word here and there. I found this. Thought you might like it. They were in the country club, having played a round of golf one afternoon. The cell phone rang, and one of the men answered the cell phone. Hello? He said. The caller, a woman, said, Honey, I was out shopping and I found a beautiful mink coat I, I, I really want. Can I buy it? It's only a thousand dollars. Okay, the man said. And, and honey, when I finished shopping, I, I went by the Mercedes dealer, and the car we wanted was there. It's only sixty-five thousand. Can I buy it? Okay, said the man. And, and honey, uh, as I drove home, I saw that house that we looked at. It's back on the market now, and they're only asking seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Can we buy it? Okay, said the man, but only offer them seven hundred and forty thousand. With that, he hung up. During the whole conversation, other men are standing around in absolute amazement, listening to the to the call and, and the response, and, and they're absolutely amazed at the generous mood of this really thoughtful man. And, and he says, "Thanks so much, guys." Hey, does anybody know whose cell phone this is? <laughs> Sometimes that's the way we are. We've got the emotion in us. We just don't know how to let it out. We don't know how to express ourselves. So be patient and know it's there. Relational needs. It's true that women tend to be better at relationships than men. Someone once said, women enjoy relationships while men enjoy results. I brought the duct tape in last week because we men are fixers. We want to fix things. And we're going to hang out with other fixers. It's not an emotional display. It's playing golf or softball or fishing or bowling or whatever it is. There's something that connects us by what we do. It's that <clears throat> it's that thing that makes us what we are because we don't want to let you know we have emotions and we also have relational needs. In tool time, Tim Allen as Tim the tool man and his wife, Jill, were having a conversation. This is home equivalent, in case you don't recognize it. Tim says to Jill, men have an extra Y chromosome. So, Jill replies, so, Tim says, men are always asking, why do we have to discuss our relationships with you? That's the way it goes to the field. We like Tim. We don't mind having friends. We just don't want like to talk about our friends. And we don't talk about emotional things with our male friends for the most part, right? I see a few heads nodding and a few that are nodding off, so I'm going to in the right place. It's said that a man uses 5,000 words a day while a woman uses 20,000 words 
in the course of the day. When a man gets to 5,000, he cuts it off. When a woman gets to 20,000, if she's not done, she keeps going. Okay. The first man married a woman from Ohio, and he told her that uh, she had to do the dishes and the house cleaning. It took a couple of days, but on the third day, he came home to find her clean house and dishes washed and everything in its proper place. The second man married a woman from Michigan. He gave his wife orders that, that she was to do all the cleaning, the dishes, the cooking, and so forth and so on. He came home the first day, didn't see any result, but after a few days, she had gotten it right. The third man married a girl from the South, the two ladies. Married a girl from the South, he ordered, ordered her to keep the house clean, the dishes washed, the lawn mowed, the laundry washed, and hot meals on the table for every meal. He said the first day he didn't see anything. The second day, he didn't see anything. But by the third day, some of the swelling had gone down his eyes, and he was beginning to see again. When a man reaches the word limit, he pretty much stops. Because if we don't, then we might reveal something inside of us that we don't want you to see. Wives, husbands and wives, need to develop a line of communication that helps us to relate who we are, not just what we are. We develop friendships or relationships in a different way. Women tend to make friends based on shared feelings with another person. Men on shared activities. Men have relational needs. We're just not very good at letting you see all of that. So I would say to us, understand that men and women are different. And when it comes to relational needs, we express things differently, but we both have for relationships. Ladies, here's the verse for you. Ephesians 5, 33. Let the wife see that she respects and reverences her husband, that she notices him, regards him, honors him, prefers him, and esteems him, that she uh, defers to him, praises him, loves and admires him exceedingly. And wives would say, what are you saying? I didn't say Paul said that. Ephesians said now let me interpret it for you. Ladies, we men need you. We need you because you are the more emotional member of our family. We need you to be our cheerleaders. Because you see, our self-esteem is built upon that which we accomplish. Right or wrong, it's built upon who we are. When you introduce somebody, when you introduce yourself, you say, Hi, I'm Tom Gaskins. I'm a pastor. Hi, I'm Rocky. I'm a fireman. Hi, I'm... She just said, Hi, I'm Sally, or Sue, or Jill, or Jane. We have relational needs. We express them differently. The third thing is, I'm leaving it even more here. Spiritual needs. Both women and men have an inborn need to know God personally. We're not just physical beings. We're also mind and spirit. We have, not only do we have spiritual needs, we have uh, physical needs, we also have spiritual needs as well. It's part of who and what we are. The problem with husbands is, men in general, is that in an attempt to provide for our families, we often get too busy in the career and we neglect the emotional part of the family. Men tend to fall into the trap of drawing their identity from what they do instead of who they are in Christ. I want you to know, ladies, 
that we men are no better than you women. And ladies, I want you to know this. You are no better than we men. We are all created equal. We all have an inner need to know God. And we also have a need to put Him first in our lives. Men need to learn to turn from living for self and to living for God. And to put God first in our lives. And then listen to this. To put our wives and families second and our careers third. How many men have screwed that? Now, how many ladies are messing that up as well? Paul said in Galatians 2 20, I myself no longer live, but Christ lives in me. So I live my life in this earthly body by trusting in the, in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. You know, when we think about God living in us and God living through us, it gives us a whole new respect. Stress-related um, diseases hit the man more often than the woman because we want to succeed in what we do rather than succeeding in who we are in Christ. High blood pressure hits the man most often. Stroke hits the man most often. Heart disease hits the man most often. Two to four times higher rate of these things for men than women because we stress out over the things of the world. So what do men need? They need to walk with God. They need to depend on God. They need to draw their significance in life not from what they do, but to who we know. Jeremiah 17, 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts the Lord, whose confidence is in him. We, we men need to learn how to put God first so that we can be the men the women be. You ladies need to understand that it's a constant struggle for us because we equate success to what we do rather than who we are. A great violinist once visited Houston, Texas. It was a whole great concert in the concert hall there. The newspapers uh, used most of their available space not to talk about this violinist, but to talk about the very rare violin, the Stradivarius, that he owned. As a matter of fact, on the day the concert was to be held and the place was packed with people, the newspaper chose to write about the instrument rather than the artist. When the concert came, the violinist got up there and he played a tremendous concert that night. Then when he was finished, he stood up and he took his violin and he smashed it against the chair breaking it into a million pieces. And the people were shocked. And he took the micro microphone and he said, listen, I read in this morning's paper how great my violin was. So I walked down the street and I found a pawn shop and for $10, I bought a cheap violin. I put some new strings on it. I tuned it all up and I came here this evening and I played for you on a $10 violin. It's not the instrument that makes the music. It's the artist. And I want you to know, God is the one that makes the difference in our lives. Living as a Christian male depends less on this and more on him, the one who holds us. Manhood is not found in physical abilities and personality and behavior and charisma and talent, intelligence and performance or profession. Real manhood is found 
in the inner man who commits himself to being filled with the Holy Spirit and lives his life to bring glory to God and to lift his wife and to love her as Christ loved the church. I use the five love languages. For you women, so let me give you five love languages real quick for men. This is from the men's edition. Gary Chapman, admiration. Five love languages of a man, admiration. God designed men with the need to be admired. So women, it's okay. You can admire a man. But men make sure there's something to be admired about you. First love language, admiration. Second love language, listening. We ain't so good at that. Excuse the English. Because, as I said last week, when you're talking, we're usually plotting out a way to fix what's wrong. But ladies, you're not very good at listening to us either. Because sometimes your mind is already wandered to 10 other things. So I would say men start listening to the women not to fix, and ladies start listening to the men and not moving ahead. Listen and hear what one another says. Family support. That's the third love language. In one survey, married men indicated that one of the, the times they feel most loved is when their wives care for their physical and emotional needs and those of the children. Gary Chapman calls this support the love language of service. Women provide acts of service for your husband and children as a way to show them your husband love, Chapman says. Family support. Guys, she may be the only one that can have the baby, but she is not the only one that can nurture the child. And that goes for grandkids, too. Hmm? Fourth is the language of sexual intimacy. In Willard Haley Harley's book, His Needs, Her Needs, he indicates that sexual intimacy, intimacy is one of the most powerful needs of most men, if not the most powerful. Men are visual, visual creatures. We see and we act. Men deal, uh, ladies deal more with the heart. So we need to try to work on that from both sides. And then five, the fifth love language is quality time. Men have reported feeling closest to their wives when they spend time together. My wife and I don't, don't look down on me. My wife and I have a, a day every weekend. We go to the grocery store together. We've been doing it for 14 years now. It's just something to do. Now we shop differently. You know that men and women shop differently? Are you aware of that? When we go to the mall or the store, the man goes to get what he's at. He picks it up. Pays for it and is ready to go. It takes you at least 20 stops to get to the same object, ladies, right? We hunt and conquer while you have an adventure. So, we have different needs because we are different. There are three not-so-secrets about men that I want to reveal and close with this morning. One is, most men need some downtime. If men are from Mars, women are from Venus, John Gray says, men crave their cave time. Now, you don't have to have a man cave to have cave time. For me, it's in the recliner watching something stupid on TV. Why? It's an escape. It's an escape. We need the escape. 
maybe if Phil Mickelson had had an escape, he would have done what he did yesterday in the open. We need some downtime. All of us do. You ladies do as well, but you choose it in a different way. Second thing is, if, if men could say to women, I think we might say this, don't expect us to read your mind. Don't expect us to read your mind. If you've got something to say, say it. Because we're not very good at mind reading. I heard about a man whose wife, who, who, uh, and, who was getting ready to celebrate a birthday. And, and the husband said to the wife, um, how would you like to spend your special day? And she said, I'd like to be six. So early on the morning of her birthday, he awoke her. He rushed her off to a nearby theme park where they spent the day riding rides, taking in all the sights. At the close of the day at the theme park, he took her to McDonald's where he bought her a Happy Meal with extra fries and a chocolate shake. That night, as they were wearily crawling into bed, her husband, Hal, asked, how did you like being six? And she said, you idiot. I meant I wanted to be a size six. <laughs> so, <laughs> we can't read your mind, so just tell us. And by the way, you may need to tell us more than once. But don't matter. Just tell us. Finally, most men really do want to be the knight in shining armor. That's why we want to fix when we think something is broken. That's why we want to help, even if you're not asking for help. We'd like you to be proud of us. We don't want you to be over in need. We don't want you to be helpless. We don't know how to handle that all too well. But we would like for you to know that we want to make a difference in your life. Deep down inside John Gray writes, every man has a hero or a knight in shining armor this day. And more than anything, he wants to succeed in serving and protecting the woman that he loves. When he feels trusted, he becomes caring. When he doesn't feel trusted, he loses that energy and it's alive. So let me go back to the scripture text again. Through wisdom, a home, a marriage, a relationship is built. And through our understanding of one another, the marriage, the home, is established. By knowledge, that's experience. That's being together for a while. By knowledge, the home is filled, the rooms are filled. And it's filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. Three truths that will enable, will enable us to build our marriage. So ladies, you've got your job cut out for you. And guys, you've got your job cut out for you. Because when we come together in our differences and we learn to listen and understand and lift and bless, we become successful. And one last thing. Ladies, don't use your husband as the front of your jokes. And guys, don't you dare use your wife as the front of your joke. You came together in love. By God, you should live that life in love. And you should tell it. And show it. So ladies, we want you to understand that we have needs. We can't read your mind. So let's grow together.
And let's be careful if we give God all honor and glory and praise. And let's sink our roots deep into the rock of ages. For those of you that are up around 50, 60 years, and you're saying to me, yeah, 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 we got all For those that are just getting started, lift in love and know that there will be hard times. And you are different. But love one another. And if God is not in the center of your marriage, in the center of your life, then you don't have a lot going for you. Because beauty will fade, as will love, unless it's good. So we stand and sing our invitation this morning. And maybe the invitation for you is simply to reach over to that one that God has blessed you with. And you take his or her hand and say, I love you. Or maybe you need to come to the altar. Maybe you need to unite with this church. Everybody, we stand together. We sing. Rock of it.